early on. This isn't surprising. They just talked about that aggressive force off they want to play with, and now they're getting all headshots as well. Yeah, the recovery coming in from Captain Mo here, but it's a little bit too late. Four on one, just going to be poor old attacker now. And he's got four angry terrorists to hold off here. He's going to be in towards the bath mirror. Could get the drop on a couple of the players here, and we're not... That was interesting. Okay. <laughs> Stan came out with his back turned. I thought that was going to kill it. He yeah, almost we went down. We just flicked off him. I thought that was going to be the moment where he gets uh, two kills there, but not meant to be. So I guess it's all fine. This is the aggressive play we were talking about on the analyst desk. We'll be rushed to open things up. We have the headshot towards somebody. And the rest of the team going towards the connector. Just getting that mid control to start of the round. And Tyloo getting picked off 1v1. So it's going to be Tyloo now on the force by presumably you can see CZ. Desert Eagles coming into hand. They have fully invested into this round. Interesting. Captain Mo has as well the AWPA for the team. Normally you want to make sure the AWPA doesn't invest anything into the second round. You want to make sure he has that AWPA going into the first gun round. And to benefit that, he was the one that got the kill. The one player on Tyloo that got the kill. So it would have put him best foot forward to try and pick that up early. Yeah. Well, obviously, that means they're all in for this round. They're confident in their ability to win it. That's why he would actually do that move. So pushing off towards short, we have got two CTs there. And we'll see whether they can actually find anything to start around. It's going to be Attacker and Fancy. So far, though, you can see a stronghold from Optic Gaming, not giving anything away, actually, in a very passive mentality. No one even scouts information, information at the moment. That's absolutely fine. It is a very aggressive map of CTs. Can get a lot of map control at the start. So normally, you want to end up towards long at this point. Optic will flash over towards that area, try and get controls. They know there's no rifles going to be available for Tyloo. Tarek starts to check out the stairwell. Methodical, smart play. DD inside smoke at bathrooms could pop out at the right time, but Rush is going to position himself as to his stand toward not only the park, but the fountain entrance. And that'll take away any chance to catch off one. Even if he does, he'll be traded out. He's trying to play it smartly inside that smoke with his back turned. And Mixwell anticipates, so sprays a very common position. But the reload, that's exactly the wrong time because it's exactly when his teammates go to long. They had to trade that. Thankfully, Tarek will find him in retreat because that could have been a huge problem for them. We have got that long control coming in now. Rush just going slowly but surely. Still with 45 seconds as well. Four and four, still heavily favored. The terrorist, though, as I say that, somebody does find a headshot. Takes down Tarek, and he manages to get the retreat here as well. Time starting to tick away, so this could become interesting. He's got no rotation back over to that side of the map, though, and they are going to check that corner just inside the bathroom. He's lost his headshot lineup. Still has good damage to Naflight. Movement mechanics of the pistols. Keep running and gunning. You might as well try it. Nafli is going to take him. But again, we had no rotations. One of them is going to get cut off. I think that's attacker that just gets completely stopped in his tracks by the Molotov. Allows the default plant. That should be straightforward at this point. They've done decent economic damage. And any kill they get forward at this point is rifles. Oh I think they've got to be repurchased. At long, it's a double peak. They're going to get face down. It's all on to Nafli. And he's low as well. 27. Good pickup on the rotation from Dailu. Oh, a little bit jittery here from Optic, it seems. These are frags they should be hitting. Some crucial mistakes there going for the AK spray. Committing to it. You've got three bullets in the magazine. Not ideal situation there. Ty Lu, it all came from that bathroom play at the start. He felt the UMP spraying through the smoke. Times his perfection there. Managed to get that first kill. I think it was somebody. And at that point, he falls back and carnage ensues for Optic Gaming. They actually defeated everything perfectly at that point. They get towards the bomb site, trading frags. Yes, they're losing kills here and there. But Molotov towards spawn and just that long spray and let it down for Optic there. And it does go to 1 1. And presumably with the bomb going down, you obviously do have to have the option to force into round number three here. They're going to take the more conservative approach to make sure they have AK in the fourth. So it's going to be more of those redundant rounds, so perfect opportunity for Tyloo to really sink their teeth into this first half. They're going to have rifles across the board here. And uh, yeah, I guess Bits Captain Mo in a fantastic position considering he picks up an AK and he should be able to bring out the orb sooner or later. After this one, we'll see whether Optic can actually bring one in himself. And somebody's left with a thousand pick up the win. Yeah, they're going to be, has to get a buyout, but possibly just light if they do go down, if they want to throw it over. Meanwhile, Pistol's heading toward the fountain position. Tarek's going to lead the way now, and behind. Stan's been the bomb carrier, not surprising, normally is. I agree with the sentiments they talked about in terms of breakout potential and optic as well. Tarek can mix well cornerstone this team, and Naf has really stepped up with oh. rushes of late. Good pickup. Speaking of, as those two players on cue. 5 HP. Yeah, combined to get Mo. They're dead right for 5 HP. Fancy's got to retreat. Good headshot on Tarek. He still doesn't even get hit by one bullet. That's all it would take. But now he's going to get pinched in surely to go down. The problem is he backs away as well. He's going to an M4 at long mix well. And good pickup from Naf as they switch back over to the AK. So now it's them with the advantage. An M4 picked up. Naf why they don't have armor. Is on 38, but still has that AK to work with. His default plant will come in. No flank play coming around. So it's the same retake, same two players. Yeah, no kits as well for the CTs. This is actually four and a half. This is a full eco, pretty much. And we go into a situation of attacker and DD remaining. There is a kit down at truck. They're going to pick that up on the way by. So DD's got that in his hands now. Smoke off. He's well aware of where it went down. That was communicated to him, so he's going to smoke it. So go for the plant, but he's not going forward at this point. So he's got to fight on his own. It leaves him open. Now fly. Good shuffle out for the peak and the trade. His teammate attacker has not picked up the kit. He's got to go forward of the smoke to try and do so. Down to a one-on-one, -on -one, and Mixwell has position to watch that, but he's going to go passive. Well, Still didn't pick up that kit. Another step forward. He might have. He's got to go for it. I think he's just going to have time, or is he? This is going to nope. be extremely close, and he doesn't even chance it. He's gone. 
60 HP bathroom should just keep the AK, but that's a round stolen back from Optic. Yeah, absolutely stolen. I think they invested a couple of P250s and some Glocks. Now you can see the buy coming into that bombsite there. It was fancy one, actually, with 5 HP, finally a couple of kills. I thought that saved the round, and then it all falls apart. Nafly with his AK-47 doing a tremendous start. He's had a great end to the 2016. He continues his good form here in round number three. Lovely stuff. Attacker can't do anything about it. The kit just a little bit out of reach there. Does get the final kill, but we go into round number four. So what have we got? We've got an AK-47 remaining from the previous round. Somebody buys a UMP, so they are forced buying once again. I guess it worked before, but now you're up against a much more well-equipped Optic Gaming. They're going to have five AKs, all the smokes and Molotovs, and once again, I'd assume even more with the passive mentality, holding back and seeing what kind of aggression is coming in from the CTs here. And just to put that in perspective as well, he was a almost, I think, about two or three steps, to be fair, away from that kit. Yeah. But he wanted to bait him out by going back to touch the bomb. If he commits to it, maybe he doesn't get him out of position, so it's very situational. Yeah, absolutely. Well, at this point, we have got some Captain Mo aggression here. Going to be trying to get some information towards the connector area. It's going to be locked in, though. Could we get some good timing here at this point? Does find his demise there, the hands of Tarek. So it will be a five and four at this point. The fancy one's taking some damage as well. At this point, the terrorists don't really need to commit to anything. They can just hold back. They've got a minute remaining. They found that first kill. They're trying to get some mid control as well. And Stanislaw adds to the fragging total there by taking down Fancy. Good start. Keep that AK alive for attacker, even if it means conceding the round. The problem is he's so far inside the A site. If they go to A all together, he can potentially get to B. But if I'm off to gaming at this point, I recognize there's one still alive. Go plant the bomb with four, well, now three. Send one early for the exit to try and find that AK-47. Hence why Tarek's already looking toward long. They want to clear out every possible angle. So narrow it off, figure oh, it oh, out. Oh, oh. Good shot as well. Somebody down inside the bathrooms, and Attacker's already looking toward that stairwell. He's going to stick around on this, surprisingly, with that AK. They're going to be the position next to him, but he actually catches them off, tries to convert the spray, nearly does get it onto Nafli. Thankfully, that pillar in the box absorbs one of the bullets because 34 HP, they're just going to get that bomb down. Really nice work from Optic overall. You want to treat every single round, especially against a team like Tai Lu, like a gun round itself. They've got head armor there, they've got one AK, UMP as well. You can't give anything away. You need to make sure you're refragging and using that buddy system we talk about so much. Ultimate managed to keep three players alive as well. There should be an eco coming in for Tai Lu. Um, I think we have a technical timeout coming in, Matt. One of the players have dropped out from the server here. Yeah, it looks like Rush has departed. Hopefully he'll rush back into the server, but in the meantime, I did say they were going to be in a situation where they were going to buy. Actually, I had that wrong, so there's only going to be two rounds bonus built up, and they were fairly heavily invested. Yeah, they they fully went into the last one, so they've got maybe a PT-50 or two. There's not real any need to purchase anything to this round. It might find you a kill here and there, but uh, I would say a full eco more than likely. So fancy one next round. He's got at the moment 2K. Same story for Didi. And Captain Mo, he's the one going to keep the eye on. He's the orper for the team. And he'll be getting, what's he going to have, $2,400 next round. So unless he finds a kill this time, he can't actually get the orb. So this is actually getting pretty desperate on the CT side. They want to get that orb rolling. want to have that opportunity to go aggressive at the start of the round. Not be a possibility for now, but this should be a full eco. A chance for Optic that you can see they're reading. Well, you can't see. We can see, I should say. Uh, Mixwell, he picks up a MAC-10 this round. It means he has that great mobility and a chance to actually mow the unarmored players down. So it's... It's going to be the MAC-10 brought up from Mixwell's result of this as well, which is actually very smart. No armor. You can go hunting, find out where they are, if there's a stack anywhere. We touched on this and also build up bank, which is, I love that aspect of it. You know I love money, Henry. You do. That's one of your main influences in your life, I believe. Yes. <laughs> I will not defer from that comment. Well, NAF with bombs are already going to head toward bathrooms, by the way, so they are trying to let Mixwell lead and exactly that. Even if he goes down, they'll trade him. We've just got one pistol invested in this attacker with the 5.7. Not looking too likely to be able to do anything with this. This is why Optic can go a bit faster this round. They know there's no possibility to force into it from Tai Lu. So this is going to go into the bomb site, send them back 10 in, swinging first. And he's farmed $1,200 already. And it's going to be all the kills going in favor of Optic. They have done some damage to him, so there's a chance a couple of frags going against them, but not meant to be. Five players surviving for Optic and have a great start here on the T side. Our overpass could be 4 1. And like I said, there is an AWP available, so attacker could drop one, but it's just not really worth it. He'd be left absolutely nothing to actually get nades or armor for himself. So we'll be five and four here. It's going to be a weak buy. I don't think they have enough to justify a kit. Attacker could have bought one there. I think I would have preferred that over the utility at this point, having one kit just to even give you a chance to clutch around there. In terms of their defense now, no kits. They have got four smokes, actually make it three and one incendiary. They need to go aggressive this round. Instead, they're going to be pushing towards short, for example. And I think we've lost a player again. So yep. we might Different be... player this time. So we're having all kinds of... Issues on the 
Optic side, this time it's going to be Stanislaw the backside. Just to touch on your point, attacker, I, I don't mind the smoke, get the smoke, but leave one of the flashbangs because he's got $300 left over. Leave a flash, grab a kit. Yeah, one player, especially in these sort of rounds where you've got to be going aggressive potentially as well. You want to be just having one player on a kit. If it comes down to a clutch, at least give them a higher chance of winning it. One flashbang, very rare is actually the win the round for you, you know, but... I think we are getting back into it quite quickly, it seems. And I see the rebuy comes in for Tyloo. I'll be interested to see whether they pull a little sly one here, maybe buy a kit. You never know. After we've got it up. thinking about it. Didi hasn't bought just yet. Oh, this is a uh, classic Simpsons screen there, Matt, if you're not aware. I, I've, I've never watched that show. Is it a British show? Yes, it's uh, made in London. And it actually has got that Kappa face on it as well. That's your father, isn't it? Uh, I don't want to talk about that. Okay. You've never introduced me to him, so. I wouldn't know. I've just heard rumors. I read it on Wikipedia. <laughs> no gift purchase for Tyler once again. Like he said, it's attacker had the uh, residual cash. He goes for two flashbangs and a smoke grenade, and it's going to be five M4s. And actually, quite good news for Egg Mix. Well, send that Mac 10. It might seem like a strange investment, but it's the fact it's two unarmored players in terms of the head armor. Fancy and Didi, he'll make mince me of those if he finds those players. So the Mac 10 is actually quite viable in this situation. Eric's going to flash himself out, take no chances toward long. Still haven't identified that there's not an AWP. Well, that's the thing. If you're reading the economy like kind of like we are, they're going to know there's no all pretty much available for them. So they can actually afford to be a little bit more audacious around, a bit looser, try and get that fast map control. If you get long at this point of the round, it's actually very beneficial. You've taken a lot of vision away from the CTs. And like I said, I thought they were going to get a little bit more aggressive in this. Maybe get some players in towards that connector area, challenge the first frag. But there is a little bit of a... Stack play towards this bathroom area. An interesting setup I haven't really seen before. No, we've not seen this corner with inside position from Fancy and Mo. Yeah. And somebody's there as well to try and trade. Watch the rapid long. Attacker's already rotated. They've actually got this red quite well. This is one of the things that the tent talked about. We'll get back to that. But Vixwell's going to start it off. Mo follows up. Somebody's there. This is one of the things Luminosity Fallen talked about. How good they are in rotations and reading. They gamble it sometimes and it works because Attacker's going to take down Tarek on the way through. This is exactly what happened to them on Inferno at Malmo. And Captain Mo closes out the round. Yeah, some interesting setups here. Like we said, I don't think I've seen one like that before. That's actually quite... Strange in terms of what the CTs normally present. They're normally kind of further back on the bomb site. They're going to play in the bathrooms. There's like one in there. They baited it by the Orpo, for example. But that was quite cool to watch. And Miktor did find that first player. The Anna might have a fancy there. But somebody and Captain Mo coming together, that tag team combination. And Captain Mo to finish things off. It is going to be 4-2 now. Optics still have enough money to buy. And there's Tyler still trying to stabilize their economy. If they were to lose this round, it'd still be another full reset here. So this is a very important one. Round number seven, a famous two AKs and two M4s. They have got a kit this time and a bit more utility. So it's looking stronger. But Optic Gaming, that was a looser round for them. Like we said, they kind of rushed up towards long, trying to get some early information. Now they're probably going to more of a detour here and try and work the map control first. So Terry back away with that smoke thrown onto the short pipe as well. So Monster smoke to come out a little bit later. It is one of the things Ty Lu did at Malmo that surprised everyone. They did it on Cobblestone and Inferno, namely. They almost play it. It's like very tactical defensive chess, where if they put a piece forward, they've got someone to watch behind him so that they always have it it's... covered off. And that's exactly what they do there. Two inside bathrooms, each angle covered. Captain Mo, Fancy, sitting behind them, watching from the dumpster all the way out to long, and then they've got a third player in by the truck to watch default if it has to swing for the trade every single time. This is when if you don't do your research on them, you can get caught out. That's why a lot of teams have struggled in the past. They haven't given them potentially enough attention when they go into these sort of best of one setups. And you find running into these kind of unique ideas that they're presenting on the CT side we haven't seen before in European CS. And when they, you play against it, you're not really sure how to counter it because you never see it before. So that's why it's very important against the Asian teams especially to actually download the demos, work out what kind of play styles they're going for so you don't get caught off by anything a little bit abstract. Stan's going to lead the way in with a flash over, but backs away from it just looking for information. I also thought you'd like that I got a chess reference in there since I started it's playing true. this week, and I've gone from a 1,200 chess rating to about 550. Nice. Uh, I think I'm <laughs> 1 in 27 on chess.com, so I'm doing good. Pretty good. Stan's going to lead in. Watch the straight potential, though. DD goes down, and he's actually ready for it, but turns his back. Miss Shaw nearly gave him his <laughs> second chance, but attacker is there. So once again, they're able to trade it off, but trades, they favor the offense, because now it thins the defense out significantly, and there's two on the B site, so this full attack on the A side it's going to benefit Optic tremendously. Down goes everyone, including the first rotator and Captain Moe, and attacker left alive alone. Yeah, I said this was a big round, Matt, and it's going to be actually very beneficial for Optic to take this one. And very detrimental for Tyloo going forward. That's a full reset for them after winning a couple in a row. It's going to be actually down to $1,400. An attacker probably wants to think about saving this AK. Not really in a position to do that. Actually looking a little bit aggressive here. Maybe pushing in towards the bank area. Looking for exit frags right now. But I think at this point, maybe to save the AK-47, it's not like the $300 is going to do him any good at this point. Let's see what he can do. You know, there's a couple of players. Maybe large P. Nice position given away. Now, this is a... 
interesting decision. I guess he may have potentially gone down with the bomb regardless. He wanted to see if he can channel him towards bank, but at least I know where he is now. Attack at, this is the same problem he's going to have, trying to get away from that bomb. He does not make it, and there it is. The reset comes in. He does find one player, I guess two overall, so he gets $16 that round, but this will be a pretty harsh eco for Tyloo going forward. So 5-2 for Optic, and you can see what they did there. Nice little play up towards middle. Actually, quite simple execution. Wasn't that the wall of smokes and Molotovs coming in like we used to? Actually got some long control there. Showed their faces towards short. And then as soon as they did that, three players stomping out towards long. And that's why they're taking advantage of the situation. It's hardly not having the AWP and the vision towards long. They're actually spotting that weakness right now and pushing that most times in the rounds here. And this is where they run into a bit of trouble. And this, so we've had three timeouts, two of them technical. This will be our first tactical. Ty Lu's called it. New rules, obviously. Valve event, we're going into the first major where those will be in place. This is actually technically first Valve, I guess, I well, minors, I guess. I'll take that back. But sure. the first time we're seeing it in full effect, that's how it will be. But it, it's going to be... An interesting thought, because that's only one round after a win, which doesn't give them much of a bonus. An attacker was in a position where if he full saved, they could have gotten an op over to Captain Mo. They still haven't got one out to him, and I'm wondering how they're going to do it, and if it becomes the priority. This is a massive problem for them. They might not get that off for a while. It will be Didi and attacker investing a little bit more. There's balance in the books, I guess, to getting them awesome down to uh, 2k each. Those guys had a bit more. I think at this stage, you probably just want to let them have a bit more. It might be beneficial going forward, but here we go then, round number eight, and it will be Nafli. An amazing player, and towards the end of 2016, I have to say, Matt, he really impressed me with the ECS finals, and of course, in this very studio, when they won their first major title, it will be Optic Gaming now up against the pistols of Tyloo, holding back. They've done a very good job of reading the economy situation of Tyloo so far, obviously. Quite simple stuff at this stage, you take win one round, you get fully reset, you know you've got to hold back, but not giving anything away, maybe apart from this first kill, but a good reply from Nafly. Yeah, in position and toward water, and he's going to sit there as well. I mentioned this last week, teams using this. I think it was Naf as well in that situation where Get right often sits on that railing and waits for sound cues. He's just sitting there. Unfortunately, Didi's able to slip by and take his teammate, but they still have good position on B. Watch this flank that's coming around. A lot more aggressive out toward bathrooms. Attacker and Captain Mo. They've already identified the fact that they are clearly over toward B. Somebody's going to rotate on that. But it's just pistols. They've got to be perfect in their positioning. And Tarek already taking down Fancy. Somebody's going to shake hands with Tarek, though. That gives him an AK before they find him in the smoke. If he had pulled that all the way out and found a bomb going down and denied it, could have had a very interesting round, but surely at this point, 13 HP. Flash out, Naf will close it. A little bit of reinvestment forced by Optic, but they're building up a bank quite quickly. Two rounds in hand almost for them. Indeed. Oh, it's still going to be another eco situation for Ty Lu. They invested a little bit into our previous round. So Taka, he's got $4,350. Oh, $4, and Didi purchases a UMP there. Not a mm. fan of just keeping the money strong, are they? I think at this point, you're not going to be winning these rounds necessarily. He probably just want to make sure the money's been a massive issue. Let's just build it up fully. Let's get the orbs out, the nades we need. Uh, Captain Mo just gets a PG-50, so he will have the orb going for the next round. No one really showing up entirely just yet, but a UMP and a CZ. Deagle as well. Like we said, a very skilled lineup. No reason why they can't find these Deagle frags. Just need to have some sort of methodology going forward. Are you going to go aggressive? Are you going to sit back? What's the plan here? And that certainly works. Ooh. Captain Mo with two frags there with the P250. Just as we called them out, he manages to make it happen. Maybe Optic Gaming can get a little bit of a day stem. And honestly, almost gets the third as well. Takes Nafly down to five HP. That's so sick to start it off, but you're wow. dead right. Goes down immediately after. Loses that AK as well. I would have liked to have seen him go more passive. Perhaps wrap back around, go to B, keep that gun in play. Fair, like he's going to be hunted at that point, isn't he? Like he doesn't know whether this place towards a short tunnel. He doesn't know whether they're coming down the connector steps. That's probably the best idea to go towards that ladder area. Did 95 damage to Nafly, to be fair. So he's done a very good job with just a PT-50 and nothing else. So just to put it in perspective as well, DD with this, he almost needs to get to get full utility. He needs to get a kill on this UMP if they go down. Well, that's a good thing about flashing the SMGs. If you do find one kill. You do get $600 in return, so we'll see now. Still a very tricky situation for Optic overall. Going to be bunching up towards that connector area, and somebody could time it here. If he gets towards the connector himself and catches them on the flank, this could be a great way to funnel them towards that B site. DD's going to be boosted as well. UMP from far, you Perfect. can tap with it. Naf so low, but he's not going to be the first one through. In fact, utility instead for him. Smoke to cover off the window short as well. This will give a bit of a gap on the cross. You need to be careful because there's a gap in the smoke as well, which could be a massive problem if they want to try and transfer that bomb over to the site. Not only that, they've had a transition from Fancy walking in good position, takes them down on the way through. What a round that was entirely, especially Captain Mo pushing towards the connector. Not necessarily even pushes, waiting at the top there. I'd love to see how he actually popped the heads off there with that 
Actually, lesser upgraded pistol. The PC50 is only $300, and managing to get two kills like that against fully equipped AK players is very impressive indeed. He does so much damage to Nafly, pretty much single handedly wins the round. And a good reaction from Tyler after getting that advantage as well. The boost towards the CT entrance, I like that a lot. It's a nice position to be in, and a perfect flank coming from Didi as well. Gets the AK, picks it up. Maybe a little bit sloppy from off to go for all that. They should have been potentially hiding those weapons, denying him actually having to pick that up. There's plenty of time remaining as well. And uh, they got caught with their pants down walking to that B site. And it will be 6-3, but still, Captain Mo, now he has got the AWP. Same story for Nafly. We talk about his team not necessarily having a designated AWP overall. They have Mixwell, Naf to kind of mix it up, and Stanislaw sometimes has a go with it as well. But Captain Mo on the traditional flower bear position. We did say long was a problem for Tyloo overall before. So let's see where they can start that position under control. They can anchor that. The one thing they tried to do is bring Fancy in to support him toward long side of the bathrooms. And he gets smoked off front door, has to rotate the long way. There's no safe way of doing so. That's going to pull Mo back. They've lost a little bit of position just because of Fancy getting smoked and being on the wrong side of it. So when he gets more aggressive, they'll call for an early rotation. They have to let Mo play more of a support role rather than hold that long. And as a result, Optic's already got it again. Yeah, this looks like some sort of execution play coming from Optic now. They've got that long control, just pushing towards the bathrooms as well. That smoke takes division away from the CT. It actually denies the all being powerful in that position. They have to readjust the setup at this point. That's Captain Mo. He'll start actually maybe go ask for a boost or go towards the truck area. You can see them actually adjusting things at the moment. This is actually probably the best way to operate in this sort of position. And like I said, Optic still have smoke remaining. Flashes in. Molotov towards bank area potentially as well. And here comes the final execution. Fancy. He's constantly trying to find better position with his rotations. He's played three different positions so far. Somebody's so far out as well. Moe's not going to be able to support him. He's got to win his duel on his own, manages to do so. Finds Nafly as well. Finally, he'll go down to Stannis Law, but Moe, he's got a smoke in front, but he's got position instead to take the bomb down. Lovely wow. reactions. That's why we want to see the AWP on Moe. He's so fast. Yeah, absolutely. Pinpoint accuracy there for Captain Moe. Picked up three kills overall. The first one was the towards long, and then some close range action there towards the bar from him. Very impressive stuff there from Tyloo. So that's a good thing to do as a CD player. You have two options there. You either sit back behind the smokes and allow the T's to plant, or you challenge him. You get in their faces. Good positioning there from Tyloo with the AK as well. Finding them with flashbangs in their hand. They didn't expect the CD to be reacting like that. Perfect way to operate when you're presented with the smokes and all the Molotovs coming towards you. I actually prefer that going forward, and we'll see whether Tyler, you can keep it up here. I think they should be able to, considering the buy of Optic. It will be a Deagle and uh, a few PT-50s and a Glock. They have got a Molotov, though, so maybe a fast play to Lord's long, it seems. This is interesting, because Mo actually didn't spot them. So he pushes up, gets to the bench. Unfortunately, gets there after they've already crossed. They had faster spawns. Now, is that going to be a misread? Because they put a player inside of the connector, and there's only one Hello. on the site. Mo gets caught by it. He had no idea. He thought they were definitely bound toward B. This is entirely a misread based on him getting there slightly late. And they're going to fight forward with these pistols. They've already picked up the AWP. Naf's got it. No armor for anyone, so it should be straightforward with the rifles as long as the positioning's not covered off. Naf, great first shot. Second as well. Lovely reactions. And it's fancy to his right M4 to cover off, but Naf's able to oh. jump and hits it as well. He's so good as a secondary opera, and he takes primary role that time. Absolutely crazy stuff there from Optic. Another pretty much fully eco win there, Matt, for Optic Gaming. That's nuts. Glocks, P250s, fasten towards long. You can see that's something from the strap book there. A team that's been known to actually have set pieces to do in those certain situations as well. Fantastic stuff there. Tyler didn't know what to do. And as soon as Nafly gets that AWP, like you said, a secondary all roll for him. Nails the shots. He's been fantastic recently. And he continues to form. And that's another frustrating round for Tyler to lose. Look at the money now. They get Famuses, shotguns, and it's uh, looking pretty dire. And you're going to round number 12. No kits again, just to note. And this could be another double eco going forward if they were to lose this round. Finally get the up. It's just gone after one round. They're not building the, enough momentum by stringing those rounds together. It's important to see these start to keep some money going forward. Having an awful one round, then it just gets to shut down in the previous two, well, in the, the next one to Glocks and PT-50s. It's just not good enough, really, is it? And we'll see whether Tyler can do anything with this. The shotgun in the hands of Fancy, a couple of Famuses, and he's going to be smoked out by... Okay, all taken down by Rush, it seems. I was about to say, they're locked out of that position, but not really much he can do when he's pushing through. Yeah, I caught him just before it bloomed, I think, even when they spotted, whether or not it was shot through is a different story. Mo's going to try and swing with he can. M4 over commits, two players there. Rush does all the damage himself. Tarek's going to spot up one inside of the bathrooms. When I say one, it's somebody. Thankfully, he's going to get away, but a good call, Mixwell. Communicates exactly where he's going to be going, and Tarek's, or rather the other way around, Tarek communicates to Mixwell, is able to take him, doesn't matter. End result, they're going to be on top of the site with only attacker remaining. Tries to get to the default denial spot inside of the corner, but caught by Mix and traded off. Three versus one. Yeah, not really much DD feel about it. He's got a Famous, no nades, no kit, 
and no head armor, not such a big deal against the AK Spurs. So just paint a picture for you of uh, how far removed he is from this situation. We'll be going towards T-Spawn to save the Famas. Not the most lucrative save, I have to say, but it's something. It's better than nothing. So I'll just be sitting towards T-Spawn, hoping maybe a terrorist runs into his cross at this point. Not having the best of games, you can see four for nine. And yeah, so that's a full reset going into the next round. They're going to get $1,900 after this one, so almost guaranteed eco, I'd say probably a double eco at this stage. But we're getting to the point of the game where they're going to have to think about force firing. It's going to be round number 13 next, then 14, they only really have money for number 15, so maybe a few more force buys to come up, considering the scoreline. Next round, the problem is you, you can't really force exactly buy. Right. You're is only it? getting 1,400. Yeah, well, 1,900 next round after this one. Apologies, you're right. But yeah, it's it's, it's uh, pretty much the same thing, let's be real. Yeah, $2,300 for the best case scenario. Like you say, though, they will be able to at least carry one gun over. Now, the problem is that could be tempting. Oh, no, don't don't be tempted. I think let this one go. Let this one slide. Yeah, Play for the 9-6 at this point, best case. Still yeah. workable. If you win pistol, you go 9-9. Nine, nine. Tyloo, I, I fancy them more for their CT sides, but they have shown us at various events they can, with preparation, have some decent execution. Sure. Well, at this point, they might have a chance to show us it. If it goes down to 11-4. Won't even get the chance, but here we go. Tarek once again, keeping his money nice and high. He has that mobile and Mac 10 going forward, and he's going to be down to DD here. Can you make anything happen? Didn't buy any nades, didn't want to waste any money here. Just wants to see if he can make anything happen with uh, Famous in hand. His teammates will join him as well. Stacking the connector, probably the best bet. As soon as that Famous goes down, someone else can pick it up and have a go. But at this stage, they know a Famous has been saved. So Optic waiting to see whether they can flush him out first. I'll probably use all the Molotovs here, the smoke grenades, and make sure they don't walk these choke points. Exactly like you're seeing right now to allow the CDs to have any sort of positional control. It's not the best smoke, I have to say. I think he missed through that a little bit. He's actually smoked himself out mm. and not them. And even if you wanted to push through it to door, massive gap. Yeah. Not to mention the sound, but it's not the best smoke. You want to throw more to the left so you can actually... Oh, not the best one either. <laughs> All going wrong. That's it, Nafline. No more utility for you. There we go. That much better. That's going to shuffle them out without smoke there. Terex a little late to position, but he'll catch them either way. DD roasts to 5 HP. Oh, this is so much money for Tarek. Not that it's going to matter. They're in a position for the rest of the half. Somebody will at least take one back, but Rush there to find him is going to leave it to all fancy. No one going to be able to grab that from Moss Fancy. Probably best to just try and find exits where he can potentially pick up a gun and get away. Swap to a P250. All right, slight upgrade. Not sure that that's justified. Keep going for more. Well, I guess he can drop the P250 next round and keep the Famas for himself, maybe, you know? you got to look at the positive sometimes, man. You're right. I'm sorry. I'm always negative. Oh, well, they know where he is now. I think at this stage, he probably just wanted to run away. But like I said, if, if they were going to force the next round, maybe the farmers can be beneficial to them. We'll have a look at the cash. So they're going to yeah, get 2,400. Yeah, they have to buy it to the next one. Normally, I have to maybe want to save this one. But they save a farmers, that'd be OK. It won't be the best buy in the world, but it'll be something to work with, you know. At least they have M4s and some body armor, a couple of nades here and there. This is weird. There it is. That's one. We'll save the Famas. That, that is actually very good for him. He can keep that Famas, drop an M4 down for a teammate, and then they'll have some nades to work with as well. So that's actually kind of a big deal. If somebody had picked up one kill in the last round, he would have been enough for a glass cannon drop. Which at this point in time, given the situation, I mean, somebody, the, the, the hard part with that is somebody's getting kills, so you kind of want him to be on a rifle. He's got good frags right now. He's at 10. Same with attacker. They're leading the way. Actually, oddly enough, considering how one-sided some of these rounds have been keeping up with most of the players on Optic. But at the same time, you want to get the op on Mo. Do you throw it over to him and sacrifice it? Yeah, this has been a really rough half for Tyler. You just as soon as they get something going there, they shut down the next round. It doesn't really seem to be working for them. A bit more aggression here from somebody. You can see them actually trying to work that first flag. I think this is the right call to make. You can see they're struggling once again. Barely any nades. One kit, one Famous as well. And it's going to be Santa Stop. Just being boosted there, looking for that first kill towards this playground area. And there are two CDs waiting on the other side. So this could actually be beneficial for him. Somebody in a good position, just seems to get the timing going for him. Doesn't work out. Tarek, very good in those close range situations. Takes down somebody, five on four, with so much time remaining as well, Matt. There's not really much they have to do at this point. They know the CTs are clutching at straws in terms of their financial situation. So, I see the hold back, get some map control, execute there, and look at the utility left over to Tyler. They have two flashbangs and an HE grenade. That's pretty much all they have to work for here. Someone needs to react, someone needs to be pushing towards shore, make a kill in towards connector. Just something has to happen. You can't allow a full execution to come in at this point. Rush is going to throw Molotovs out toward long where the op would normally play. Flash around as well. Ooh, Take no chances. Captain Mo taking down a 40 HP. I think that was a hands of Nath line. Yep, thrown from just inside main entrance. Moves in the corner. Dee Dee. 
Gonna try and support on him, and Fancy's rotated around. This has three rifles on A. Last time we saw four, it worked out for them, but the problem is they lead themselves in positions. And I say Mo gets over aggressive because it doesn't leave DD able to trade, so he has to take a wide peek. Gets taken down as well. Rotation from attacker. Fancy's gonna push through the smoke at long. Stan wins that duel. Couldn't quite catch him off. Mix will take advantage of his teammate planting. Try and use that boost to see. Down to the back stairs, an attacker. We just talked about this. You're gonna go down here. You're already in a tough position. Yeah. I say get up, keep the M4, but yeah. let's see what he can do, I What's suppose, to ground. Damage There's... the economy of the T's. There's so much money for them. Just stay alive. And on this stairwell, not only that, he gets spotted. They're obviously gonna beat him down low. The problem is now for Nav, it's an AWP up close. So that's okay. a big win, actually. A bit of luck, and thankfully, Tarek drops down the stairs and gets hot on his heels. So the thing is, right, it's round number 50 next round. Optic can definitely buy you. They're not even damaging their economy. You just want to save that M4. He gets two kills, sure, and that's gonna be $600 going forward. And Fancy somehow has the exact money to buy an AWP there. I think maybe over $100 in residual cash, but for some reason, he's got more money than everyone else. They get a Famous out. A Scouts, a UMP, make it two of those. And it comes down to Fancy, the Glass Cannon Orb as well. This has been a real rough ride for Tyloo. Haven't really arrived. There's some good gun rounds overall, a couple here and there, and a couple of eco wins as well. But overall, this has been pretty tough to watch for them. Opti looking very on form right now. And we'll see whether they can continue with that 11-4 scoreline. It will be the Scout. Challenge now fly as he goes towards Monster Tyloo. And for me, for Tyloo, you have to question their money. Oh, oh, lovely shot from Mo. Even with a scout, he's been able to hit the headshots. You have to question their money management from the very beginning, though, because we talked about it, round two, when they forced in Captain Mo, or rather round three, after they'd lost. Remember, they did start this off with an eco immediately after. So round three, when they lost that, and they force him onto a CZ when they could have saved him, potentially brought the op out sooner. Rush tries to fire through the bathrooms, can't quite land, and no one up close. They get the hacker. So far, the only one to take damage is over towards short on B. They've rotated somebody back around to A, so they are trying to be ahead and proactive in terms of rotations. That's about all they can hope for, but they've got the man advantage, so no need to overextend, yeah. and somebody's got to be very careful at trying to push up in front of the bathrooms. Certainly a winnable round at this stage. Five and four, you have the all up as well. No one really taking any damage at this point. Just holding back. Fancy, here we go then. The crucial player in this situation. If you can find one kill and stay alive, that's pretty much round over. Very close to the aiming shot as well. Now, the interesting thing is they spot him and they know he's going to fall back. Does that bait somebody in? Is that enough to play this corner position? If he even can get one in this, it's beneficial because they've got two more inside of the A site, but he has to pick up one. If he goes down that early on, then it's a long rotation over and the people rotating. Attacker, no kit. Famos, no kits for anyone. And they are going to swing out. Good pick from somebody. Manages two, much better than he needed. But he'll absolutely take it. Moe's going to be inside the site. Another tag up. That'll allow the UMP much more potential. And in fact, he's going to try and swap over and do it himself. Flash above. Smoke to his left. So he couldn't quite go all the way. But makes sure gets caught regardless. And DD's there. Well won by Ty Lu. Lovely stuff there. Especially from that scout to kick things off. If we didn't catch the shot there, but it's going to be Tarek walking into the crosshair. Captain Mo potentially didn't expect the scout there. And somebody doing some tremendous work there. Nafla getting a little bit unlucky after he jumps past. His teammate drops before him. And then we'll get that double kill for the UMP to find round number five. It's actually pretty decent work from Tyler. All things considered, as a rough half, like I mentioned, the economy fell to bits. And uh, now they're giving themselves at least a winnable situation. 11-4 for me was a little bit too far removed from actually winning potential there. But we'll see whether 10-5 does allow them to go forward. The pistol will be absolutely great for them. They do go over to the terrorist half, though. It's definitely less favored than the CT, I have to say. A win pistol once. Priority one. Yeah. Go back to that over rotation as well. You talk about the round where Mo pushes up and doesn't see them go to long. Mm. They get caught on that. There's there's a few situations that could have painted a much different picture. Mixwell, meanwhile, is gonna get very aggressive. So too is Tarek tags up Didi. Pistol's aggressive again. Optic, they started off the first one with the first three kills before it was responded. This time they've got one, make it two, and there's the third. So it's Ooh. just attacker and fancy Careful. remaining once more. Attacker's gonna get tagged down as well. 17 as he gets pushed back in the corner. Fancy. Tries to rotate over and help his friend, but realizes he has no friends. Henry, you can Not relate. Anymore. Yeah, that's true. I certainly can, but... It's going to be fancy out. Five versus one. Just trying to do anything he can. One kill will be beneficial, give us some money at least, but he does not manage that, as the analyst desk pointed out. Optic likes to be very aggressive on this map, including the pistol round there. It's Tarek to kick things off towards Connector. Found the first headshot, then it seemed all of his friends arrived, and he managed to bring it down to a five on one situation. It's landing every single headshot with that USP, and it will be round number two coming in. No bomb going down traditionally means uh, the terrorists will be buying off in the second round. That looks to be the case so far. Tech nines and a Deagle as well. No grenades. That's why I don't really like it that much. An overpass, I think you're better off just having all the utility to work with going forward. If you get the bomb down, sure. It's so it's difficult to get into these bomb sites when the CDs sit far back. They get a rifle set up like this one. They get, I was about to say three rifles. That's actually only two for optic, but it's still not a huge deal. Find the first frag, fall back. 
Mr. Lyle Tyler is ready to try and execute with no nades. Playing closer to a position as well where if fast-paced pistol play comes in, they can rotate up the stairs. Remember, A to B much faster. Gravity, probably the reason for that, Henry. Yes. But Rush and Stan both playing close to the jungle and stairwell position can get quite quickly over back to the A site, or rather up to the A site as it is. So we're just kind of feeling the map out now, Tyler. You know, the it's long, they've got some bar for control as well, but the problem is, how do you get onto this side? It's gonna take one of those shots that just goes in your favor, small timing, a little mistake coming from optic there, it's gonna take, but so far so good. Tarek will be holding the Famous, and we have got a player close towards shore here. Fancy with the Deagle, could actually open things up here. He slipped in there, just as Tarek looked to long. He's gonna have the lineup, but he can't hit the shot. That gives the position away, and Tarek makes no mistake turning it around. Now, no one's at long, he needs to be careful to smoke because he's caught in the crossfire. Thankfully, Mixwell's up to the task of bailing him out, going a little bit further as well, but somebody's there now. Shadow position. That's exactly it. Somebody spots that before Rush even gets toward the top of the stairwell. That goes both ways, that shadow, unfortunately. And it's Nafli, one versus two, and somebody has armor with that gun he's picked up. So the MP9 becomes a bit of an issue. This isn't a penetration. Miss shot from somebody. I think he's looking toward the other stairwell. Headshot from Naf. That's going to pull it to just the Tech 9. Naf's got a kid as well. Ooh. He's got flames to try and push back the T. They're going to spot each other up finally. Down to 55, and Benefit goes to attacker on the Tech 9. Wow, attacker there playing behind the bomb site. Playing a day in this game, I have to say that, but this is the timing going very nicely for Tyler. An A split there, pushing from the bathrooms and long as well. It's somebody with that great timing. Through the smoke, just as Tarek's attention is taken towards short there. He pushes through, finds those two kills. Bomb goes down. Just come down to 1v1 short. He plays it quite nicely. Most CTs would expect him to be in towards the bathrooms area. Might throw some flashbangs. He's waiting for the CT to make a mistake then phase. It seemed like Nafli was aware of the situation, but with that MP9, it's couldn't do the damage there. And it will be Talu biting back here. 11-6, and a little bit of investment here from off the game. I guess it's called a partial buy. Some Deagles, PT-50s, mix all with the head armor as well. They're going to be going aggressive, of course, with the Deagle. Trying to find a headshot there. Tarek can't really inflict much damage there, but Attacker certainly can as he takes down Stannis Law. So once again, they lose pistol, but win round two. The problem is they lost round three in the first half. They need to convert this. Goes without saying, and seemingly they've done enough because it's Rush remaining one versus four, just the P250 in hand. Obviously, you can build up cash with that weapon. That should be primary objective, but all said, if I'm Optic, and I know you're a fan of this situation, sit back. Play the long game, even if you can't force into the next, leave the pistols alone, get full utility in your first gun round instead. You've got a cushion still of four rounds. Yeah, absolutely, uh, especially this round. You just want to experiment with the last one. They know they can be very good with the Deagles and the PD-50s and such, but this round, don't really have to invest anything. Like I said, we've got a better round to play with. Let's get to 11-8, and we should just close this one out with the gun rounds going forward. But Tyloo now, a chance then to build up some money and actually have a real chance of getting back into this game. So still, anyone's game at this stage, and we'll see whether the PT-50 just seems of all take or five of those in a flashbang. You know we want to stack into one, one particular area. It looks like middle this time. Use our flash over the wall. See if you find anyone out of position. That's going to be your best chance of making anything happen here. Very unlikely any kills will come of it, but we'll see what happens. Flash is good. Fancy taken down. Here we go. It's going to wrap back around, try and catch them off and retreat, does so, Tarek falls. So they go pistols, no armor, I can live with that. They'll still have enough, Moe's going to clean them up. UMP kills for him, beneficial because again, AWP, he'll finally be building toward it. In fact, he's got 8650 already. Do they go with the bonus or do they just get him onto the gun and try and continue to catch up? I think with 8K and you're trying to catch, you don't want to really give anything away. I'd say upgrade the AK, but it still is a very viable weapon. I think he's deciding right now, he hasn't bought any more utility. So let's see what he decides to do. There it is, oh, up the upgrade. Okay, I was about to call you and say he's going to keep it. No, but. I just think on you, it's a best of one. If you're playing maybe a best of three, you've got a lot more to work of there. You can go for the big money game, but you're chasing. You want to get every round going forward. And he still has an op in hand as well. So he's got 5250 plus if they lose this 1400. So he's going to be fine to bring out an AWP in the T side. Should they like to do so fancy? Good nade up over top. Fountain will only do 15 damage to Stanislaw, but enough to dec discourage him. Only long enough to call for Tarek's aid. And they've got four players pushing that aggressively with only Nafli inside of the B site. Smart from Tyloo not to overcommit. Absolutely. Well, then, things slow right down here. The pace has come to a more of a default approach here from Tyloo. The CTs have fallen back. They were quite aggressive towards along that stage and in the middle as well. You can see on the minimap right now, they've actually pushed all the way back to the bomb site at this point. No one giving anything away. The CTs actually holding very, very far back indeed towards that A site. I think we have one player who's actually pushed towards... Okay, Stanislaw is actually just jumping up towards Shaw, watching the short tunnel there. So this is actually no one looking for information at all, just to be holding back and seeing where the T's actually commit going forward. And we have got nades works, working there for Tyloo and some mid-control as well. They're not really sure as to what's going on. The CT's aren't leaving them any clues. 
It's interesting as well because we see that push sometimes. Oh, that. Oh, Katamo didn't want to wait. You want to see if he's going to get another bite of the cherry there, but not meant to be. Yeah, as soon as he spotted, Stan smartly won't repeak that. We normally see a four man push, pistol, push excuse me, with pistols in that position out toward A to see it with guns. Just goes to show you how aggressive Optic want to play. They have a fast style right now. And I actually think the maps like this, Cash, where you can get aggressive on the CT side, could benefit them tremendously in the long run. Mixwell's going to take down attacker. Good position from the park sign. Watch inside of the site, though. He's got to get Tarek in a better position. They're smoked off. He's isolated. Down he goes, but thankfully Stan able to catch Mo. It's going to allow for a flank to come through. Rush is still on that flank as well. So even though they've got one, do they know that Rush is there? Absolutely not. DD down. Hello. And they've got full position. Somebody, though, inside of the smoke. 8 HP has to be perfect. And he's found in the end. But again, they've still got a full buy in hand, Tyloo, and they can bring out the AWP. So that's really nice timing there for Optic overall. They went aggressive at the start, showed a little bit of presence there. Some nades at the start, actually firing some bullets and then falling right back there. They gave themselves the call to actually go right back to the bomb sites. They're not actually pushing at all, not hunting for information. It's Mixwell at the front line with the AWP. And just as he's doing that as well, we've got Stanislaw coming in the back. He's pushed towards B with 20 seconds remaining. He knows there's no B commitment there as well. He's hunted, taken a bit of a chance, got himself towards connector as well. And Talu just have no time to actually pay attention to the flanks coming in that stage. They have to commit to the H site. Taken down, and it will be 12 8 here. Still, though, plenty of cash, and I think this is a tactical timeout coming in for Tyler at this stage. It would make sense. They've got a lot of money going forward. It's lost the first gun round. Need to work out what's the plan going forward. This is a map that opens itself up to execution based play. Um, I'd say Tyler not necessarily known for that. They're known for actually just playing as a, a great unit and actually going in. High fragging players like Captain Mo opening the rounds up for them. Attacker as well can be very impressive. He's actually on 16 for 10 right now. Not far behind, or I say not far in front. of somebody on 19 for 16. So those are the heavy hitters right now for Tyloo. Let me go into round number 21 now. Money, it's a little bit of residual cash. You see the attacker there at 4,300. Somebody at 4,000 as well. So if they were to lose this round, there's still an opportunity to buy going forward. And a better buy coming up from the CTs than I was half expecting, considering they won the round, but lost three members, so I thought the reinvestment would cost them dearly. Thankfully, the AWP is still up for Mixwell. And four kits, decent amount of smoke. Rush going to wait. This is where he swings. We can trade back toward Monster, but also play in toward the wood side of Short. Meanwhile, over on A, it's Mixwell that goes down with that AWP, and Tarek's not able to trade it back. Decent damage on Fancy, but he's got to retreat to the site with only 22 himself, so this is actually very good from Tyloo. It's going to force a rotation as well from Nafli. Yeah, a little bit of a blunder there from Optic. The orb caught. Out of position. Tara can't get the refrag at all, but this boost is the recovery. Maybe Tara can do something about it. It's going to be Stanislaw falling on the other side. They have a good reaction from Rush. Does make it a winnable situation. This next frag, very important. Tara gets the opportunity to get the kill. Brings it down to a three on three. We have got Fancy and Didi, who are low HP as well. There we boost go. in the back is lovely. Perfect play from Tara. He's able to get to the truck as well. Transfer them around. Manipulate with the fire, excuse me, as well, because that's going to keep them away from the bomb and to the left. So he knew he was isolating it down to a one versus one peak. Low HP as well on Didi if he goes again. Doesn't want to overcommit too much. He's getting his teammates into position in the meantime. Good flash. Over and he lines them. It's actually Nafly that hits the second, but perfect play nonetheless from Optic. Really nice. I love this boost coming from CD Spawn. They're a man down. Tarek's low HP as well. They need to throw something a little bit interesting to the mix there to give himself a chance there. Perfect play from Tarek. The boost gives him a nice kill. They're calling us a boost play. They're trying to watch and focus towards that area. He's already adjusted. He's got good flashbangs coming from his teammates as well. Great comms. He manages to find three kills and gets the damage done on the fourth as well. Lovely stuff from Tarek. And now things are starting to fall apart for Tyler. We did say they had money before. Now they're on two Galils and three AKs. And they built that bank up so fast. Over three rounds. Pistol win. A couple SMGs involved in the next one after that. Taking three rounds to break them down. Optic themselves, though, yeah. are still in a position where they're going to be limited. So this is a very important round. If they go down here and it goes to 14-8, Optic's got it. If they can pull this to 13-9, convert the following, we still have a game. Yeah, this is like breaking point for either side. So then, MP9 for Mixwell, Stannis on the UMP. Not ideal after winning a couple of rounds, so that's why they're bringing these boosts in as well. You can see, trying to bait in the player who's asked Mixwell, right? So he's going to be hiding until the very last minute. It looks like Rush is there by himself with that boosted player, and he's going to try and bait in Mixwell the best they can, and he'll try and deny the plant if they do go towards B, that is. So that's a setup on towards that side of the map. You can see it's a little bit thinner towards A. We're going to have one player in the form of Stanislaw towards the bathroom area. He's only got the UMP as well, and it will be backed up by Tarek, who had a tremendous last round, but there's certainly more of a focus towards B at the moment. Tackle will have heard that. Smoke come out from the left side, bounce of bathrooms, indicating someone. As it's toward long, that's where Stan's playing right now, trying to get a little bit closer to that position. If Fancy pushes through, I thought he was about to. Meanwhile, boost on B at about the right time. Maxwell's going to rotate over as well, get a little bit closer in. He's got the MP9, so the closer, the better. 
Yeah. You can play on the ramp and try and surprise and deny the plant as well. This is good timing from Stan as well on this flower. Oh, yeah. Good trigger discipline. Just sit, just wait, never Bomb mind. Down. Going out. Bomb, exactly that. Going to buy time. Nate as well is going to do further damage. Captain Mo. Tagged at 44. That's about as good as it gets. And Mixwell's still trying to find a position, but the boost is gone. They've got to rotate it back in. The rifles overwhelming that poor little MP9. The sewing machine can't stitch through steel. It's going to be Stannis Law trying to wrap around now. Last chance for them. Good pickup from Nafly, though. He finds two. That's going to put Stan in a position where he's not spotted. He can surprise them. Good headshot on Mo. And this is such a massive one on one for attacker. He's got three kills, but he's only what? got 26 HP. And that's enough for Stan to take him down immediately. Amazing shot from Stannis Law there. What a recovery. Kicked off there with Nafly. It looked like Tyler had the B bomb site completely shut down. They found that first boost kill coming in and found Mixwell as well. The MP9 couldn't do any significant damage there. His attack with the great opening frags. And then Nafly out of nowhere, the AK-47 lights them up. And the CTs do claim another victory there. Stannis saw this UMP to finish things off. I love this shot to finish things off there. I didn't think he said a child for attacker got in a perfect position just to pick him off there. Boom. Did have low HP, but still very good accuracy for Stannis Law. Finds three kills in total. Bomb going down, just help out Tyloo slightly. I think they have got, what is it right now? It's going to be third stage loss, but it's the bomb going down as well. It's not great, but it's something. Two players have a head armor, three AKs. And a little and a UMP. Let me see the grenades as well. You can see Didi, Katamo, pretty much no utility between them. 14A going forward. This is the round that pretty much decides the GG. Tyler can hold on for a little bit longer. If they win this, it'll have to be a clean round. And considering we talked about the losses and lack of economy, they've certainly built up a strong one on this T side, all things considered. Four rounds against them. They've had guns in all four. Three rounds, I should say. This being the fourth. And they've had guns in all four. So impressive start. Stan's going to play left side of Monster. Meanwhile, Didi, though, this smoke. Such a tough position to be in. Tarek's waiting for it, wants to try and get through. Needs a teammate to get a flash out for him, but Naf's not in a position to try and do so, and that's going to leave Tarek to get taken down. Stan gets found as well over toward B by Captain, and that's going to leave all options open, A and B. And they have to do something, so look for Mixwell to be the one to try and lead the way. That smoke nearly dissipated perfectly for Fancy to be left open. Indeed, well... It's going to be a 5 on 2 situation now. Optic just crumbling here. This actually will open up the game once again for Tyler, but still not over yet. They need to actually focus on this round. Captain over two kills so far. Nafly coming with the flank, but the bomb is down towards B. This kill almost insignificant at this stage. Probably just want to hold on to these rifles. No, they're not going to win this round. So falling back, I think it's going to be mixed well. Just kind of sniffing towards B, seeing if there are any kills available for him. Just trying to control the terrorist economy, but ultimately gone. they want oh, to be safe. Okay. Yeah, just check it. He downed either way. I thought he was going to walk out back and back turned. So that's only going to leave one AK for Mix. Yeah, that's actually quite a massive round. I think the CTs have been had a lot of pressure applied to them in terms of their money. They've won three rounds in a row, sure, but lots of them have been very tight indeed. And we'll see what they decide to do next round. They do save one weapon here. I think the last few rounds have had one player surviving, then three, then one or two before. So then, Tyler do bring one back and actually potentially buy themselves some more time here. It does look like it's going to be an optic victory overall, but Tyler, you can make it to double figures at least. There's no reason for optical force into this one. It'd be a bit of a nightmare if they did. Yes, they saved an AK, but you've got such a better round here. Concentrate on the money game, and let's not actually give too much away. So 14-9, still a better rounds for optic. Pressure not going to be mounting just yet. Mix well. Still has that AK as well, so he goes very aggressive. He's actually going to beat them out toward long this time. Smoke in front. He'll peek it, but meanwhile, it's over toward B, and they've gambled on this. They've gambled on Mixwell being able to anchor that alone, and if he goes down, well, it's a lost cause. The pistols are all going to be over toward the B site. That's actually beneficial, and they push three toward water as well, so they could wrap back in and surprise them if they're not careful, if they don't put additional smokes out. Oh, Tarek even better. Shoots a little soon. Does manage to pick up one, and Nafs takes advantage of the aggro being pulled away. And smartly backs out as soon as he gets that kill. So three versus three, he's on 14. Mixwell still has that gun, keep in mind. And as soon as he arrives, makes no mistake about it. Oh, so wow. too does Nafly. The Deagle, oh, that's lovely because it's all on fancy bombs down. Back toward the monster tunnel. And he's got to fight forward first before he can go toward it. He's going to miss a few shots, leaves him on 24. Has to be so efficient. And unfortunately, he's already made that task so much harder by losing that HP. Yeah, low HP, and they're aware of the position of the bomb as well. That smoke towards short isn't going to help him out too much here. As soon as he grabs the bomb, the CTs are going to be waiting for him as well. Oh, to go. And nice play from the CTs actually playing towards the same positions. Nafly with three kills continued. Their strong form is shown, and that's a bit of a nightmare for Tyloo. Going up against one AK and some pistols there, and it's going to be towards that B side they go. But the problem is, just as they go towards 
the B side from Monster Tunnel. It looks great because there's no CDs there whatsoever. But you pointed out, as soon as they commit towards Monster, they're not really feeling about the flanks at that point. It's going to be the CT, especially Tarek, coming from the short pipe, straight in behind them. Doesn't find an amazing amount of kills there, but he throws a spanner in the works there. It starts to fall apart, and the rotations come in a mix. Well, he's finding kills at that AK, so obviously tired at this point. 59, have to force into its map point. Four AKs, barely any nades, one tech nine, and towards middle they go. Not super aggressive just yet, but they have got some smokes going down. That's going to be smoking off the bathroom area, of course, and then flashes towards long. I'd assume that's where they're going to be going. Still not out of this, believe it or not. If they do find this round, it could be another double EK for the CTs. But that's a big if right now. So toward the bathrooms instead. Tech nine only for attacker. I put him next to DD with bomb and now clears out at long. The mix up close is going to play off Tarek because he can watch in front. Oh, through the smoke as well. There's a smoke in front of bathrooms right now. Tarek just sprays completely through it and takes them down. That's so smart, so good, because I was about to say he's covering off that position if they push through it. Instead, he just opens up with a kill. Good trade from Stanislaw over toward B. That's going to limit them. Funnel them all the way in toward A. And position from Mixwell, too good. Now watch to his right, because he's got fancy in behind him. If he doesn't find him in time, there's no one there yet to trade, but good pickup. He's going to win that duel, Tarek. It's going to win the match. 16 to 9, Optic. They win the first of three to move forward. Remember, Swiss style, you win three, you're through. You lose three, you're gone. Solid game overall from Optic, I have to say. Tyloo with some glimmers of hope. There's some good rounds, but ultimately the economy game in the first.